the first thing I feel when I look at Karl blocks in a Roman Osteria is embarrassment. I mean, it's hard not to. The expressions of the three central figures regarding the viewer are as piercing and exacting as any I've seen in real life. Actually, four, with the cat in the corner scowling more ferociously than any other figure depicted in the canvas. There's so much to read in just their faces right away. A mix of vile, disgust, anger, vitriol, intrigue, and worry. This image almost perfectly captures the feeling of public embarrassment. We might hold on to memories of a public snafu in which we were so embarrassed, we then sharply averted our eyes from meeting the gaze of the people around us, convincing really only ourselves that maybe no one else saw that. In this painting, however, that comfortable fantasy is immediately shattered. We're made to feel almost naked in their presence. There's this immediate sense that we're not supposed to be here. The patron's hands grasp around their cutlery, the man more forcefully than the woman's, like he's planning out how he's going to kill you. As our gaze invades this seemingly private space, or at least a space that's more private than we initially thought it to be. After that less than warm introduction, the next thing we note as viewers is what art historians consider the hallmark of Bloch's work, his realism. The detail in the knives and forks brandished freely by the diners as I mentioned before. The way the cloth drapes around the edges of the table, the careful folds in the woman's dresses and the man's shirt, the interplay between the light and shadow throughout the piece, giving the painting its reflective, three-dimensional quality, the astonishing detail in the fur of Mr. Whiskers' coat. Need I go on? We're bearing witness to what chief curator at the SMK Peter Larson describes as Bloch's seductive ability to depict objects, details, and clothes with striking realism an ability which coincides with the very real feeling of public embarrassment or shame that we're all too familiar with, one that's felt no more palpably than in this painting. Commissioned by the merchant Moritz G. Melchior, Bloch's best friend and major supporter who's also featured in the background, this painting was made in connection with A Journey to Italy. With Melchior requesting a painting similar to that of Wilhelm Marstrand, Bloch's former mentor whom he studied under at the Royal Danish Academy of Art. You can see that piece here. The debt that Inner Roman Osteria owes to Marstrand's Italian Osteria scene is made crystal clear to any viewer. The central figures regard the viewer as well, but not nearly as negatively as in blocks. They are warm and inviting, with kind eyes that bring the viewer in. The lady in green holds up her glass as if giving a welcome toast to our arrival, while the lady in red gestures pleasantly for you to come sit with them. If this scene depicts meeting strangers for the first time, then they might not be strangers for very much longer. In Bloch's painting, however, there is no such warmth or invitingness. It's a painting that's threateningly anti-social, anti-hospitality. It's clear the man is in the process of either turning away, shutting you off from the conversation you so rudely interrupted, or turning towards you, with a grasp on that fork that doesn't bode well for anybody. The only momentary relief this painting gives you can be found in the seductive glance of the lady in yellow, which in any other context we might read as attraction, but in this one, I can't help but feel that she's actually taking pleasure in my discomfort. It's a little unsettling. Why this? Why would Bloch choose to, for lack of a better term, pervert the initial meaning of his master's work? Transform a painting that represented the joy and friendliness that comes with a momentary encounter with a stranger to a painting about embarrassment, shame, and self-loathing? Well, plainly, I think this dramatic flipping of ideals makes you feel differently. In Marstrand's work, you feel welcome, invited, but then that's it. There's far more drama in a piece that doesn't immediately open itself up to the viewer, a piece that in fact judges the viewer instead. And it's this process of breaking the fourth wall in as dramatic a fashion as Bloch does that reminds us the role we serve as viewers of dramatic art. There's an inherently voyeuristic nature we have to art. It's through canvases we judge not only the figures present, but the artist as well using their art to inform us about their ideals, feelings, and perspectives. In this case, what we learn about Bloch and his Osteria piece is that he's not afraid of judging the viewer back, interrupting that cognitive process that's almost second nature when it comes to making overarching assumptions about artists and what they have to say through their art. 
It's genre paintings like this that constituted as a break from the usual commissions Bloch received from various Danish religious establishments. From paintings of friars to monks to children duck hunting, he often looked to depict these strange, rather amusing scenes in his work when he could, separating his genre paintings from his more serious work, most notably his series of religious paintings depicting the life of Jesus Christ. From his many miracles, to the Last Supper, to the crucifixion, to his resurrection. It's in these works that we see the same level of realism and attention to detail that we see in his genre paintings, in Osteria. But there's a notable difference in the reaction Bloch seeks to elicit in his depictions of Christ versus his genre work. In his religious art, we are asked to regard, to behold the power of God, to bask in his light. And it's Bloch's attention to realism that adds to this image of divinity, perfection, and sanctity. It's art that is meant to be held within our hearts as we're transformed. In the Osteria, the art regards us. It beholds us, judges us, makes us feel small in its presence, a quality it shares with Bloch's depictions of Christ. It's within Osteria that Bloch reminds us that religious art isn't the only art that allows us to feel but he also reminds us that he is more than just his religion. And judging him or any artist on the ideals represented in a single canvas is a hollow pursuit. Bloch even includes himself in this work, with his back turned to us, as if to say, it's my turn to judge you. And it's through that process of being judged that we're reminded that art is more than just the subject matter it depicts, but is also transformed by the people viewing it who, as we all have done, implant their own biases and perspectives into the art they bear witness to, who can't help but see themselves either reflected in the canvas as people who've experienced embarrassment, or know what it feels like to see embarrassment in other people. If his religious paintings and their revered, beautiful nature serve to remind us that God exists, then his painting in a Roman Osteria serves to remind us that we exist. That our interpersonal, universally inconsequential battles with shame and embarrassment are just as real and worthy of being depicted in art as Jesus Christ himself. But shame isn't all we are. We're a complex unity of joy, love, laughter, and friendship. The characters in this Osteria don't seem to see it yet, but with another glance that lasts longer than a moment. Maybe they will. Mind Theater is a solo effort produced and written by me, Awacking Bad A. For updates on the show as well as my other content, follow Mind Theater Pod on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. If you want to show monetary support, the Kofi link is in the show notes. Thanks for listening. I'll catch you next time. 